Okay, so this should be uh, just a short video while we tidy up this function a bit. So what we've got going on here in position build item is it's really doing quite a lot. It's working out what are we trying to build? Have we hit something to snap to? If not, we just position the item normally. If we have hit something to snap to, what is it? And then we've put all the blueprint in here for snapping either a wall or a floor onto a floor. Now, ideally, this, all this logic for doing the actual snapping, that could that could do with going into its own function. So that all this blueprint does is work out what are you building, what are you snapping to, if anything, and then just calls a specialist function to deal with that. So if we disconnect both of these, then try and turn all of this into its own function by going right click, collapse to function, it will complain and fail to do it. And the reason is we've got two possible points, this one and this one, where the function could start and it won't let you do a collapse to function unless there's only one sort of input execute if that makes sense. So just to get around that, what I'm going to do is just wire this to here and then reselect everything. Now it will let me do a collapsed function because there's only one input. So we go collapse to function. That's all the way over here somewhere. Let's call this snap to floor. And then in the snap to floor function, we just want to go and reroute that back to where it was. And then really all we need to do here to get this to work is add the variables which this function doesn't know about. So you see like set uh, offset amount, set snapping wall, they're kind of like grayed out. They don't have the green and red colors they'd normally have. That's because those variables don't exist in this blueprint. So uh, in this function, I mean. So what we need to do first of all is just add those. So we've got um, snapping wall there. So if I go new local variable, Snapping wall. See how that's now lit up with its red color, like it knows what it, what it means. Then we've got another boolean somewhere. It's need to rotate, I think. Uh, it's important that we get the spelling exactly the same as it was before. So if we look here, need to rotate is just no spaces, capital N, capital R. Uh, so it has spaces, capital N, capital R. So let's just duplicate that. Need to rotate, question mark, and now that one should be happy. Yeah. For these ones, we've got offset amount, y offset, and x offset. Yeah, so new variable is a float, and it's offset space amount. It may not have had a space, hold on. No, it didn't. Okay, so try again. Offset amount. Yeah, no, that one's happy. So x offset and y offset. Let's just duplicate that, x offset, and duplicate again, y offset. Right, so now all those variables are happy with us. The last thing then is hit item and hit need to come into this function. So when we call this, we need to pass in the thing that we, this is the thing we're trying to snap to, the thing we hit with a trace. This was the location of that hit. So we need those two, and we need this function to be told, like it knows we're snapping to a floor, but are we trying to snap a floor to a floor or a wall to a floor. So that will need to be passed in. So if we add an input, it will be a boolean and it will be um, something like placing wall. Okay, then we also want a um, actor, which is the thing that we're snapping to. So I'm just gonna call that snap to. Actor, yep. Yeah. Then we want this hit location, which is a vector. So we need another input. I'm just going to call that hit. And that is a vector. So these ones are pretty straightforward. I mean, we just um, take that off there and wire that in. Take that off there and wire that in. And then there's one more place where we need to wire up a snap to, which is over here, where this is. So if we take off that hit item, drag down here, say reroute just to make it a little bit easier to hit that in there and then just double click for another reroute just to tidy that up okay now this placing wall is if you remember it goes down this path if we are placing a wall and this path if we're not so what we want to do is disconnect that wire that into here 
move those along a bit, then the first thing we'll do in this function is take that and just store it in this variable. And snapping wall is probably not the best name, is it? We're placing a wall down, so I'm just going to go placing wall. Oh, yeah, one tip. If you give a variable the same name, you can see I've got an error message there where it's saying, I'm trying to call this variable placing wall, and I've already got an input called placing wall. To get around that, if you want the same name, just take out the space and it will let you do it. So we pass to this function whether we're placing a wall or not, immediately have a branch, wind up like that, and then if true, Offset is that much, if false, offset is that much. The reason why we store that in a variable rather than just shoving uh, this pin straight into this condition is that we need this value later on. So um, somewhere all the way down here. Yeah, so instead of having a line stretching all the way across the blueprint, we may as well just store uh, the value. So that should all work exactly as it did before, but it means that this function, let's get rid of that for a second, this can now be a lot tidier without all those boxes. Like I said, all this is doing is saying, what are you building? Are you snapping? No. Okay, do this. Oh, you are snapping. Okay, what are you snapping to? So here we're asking, what is the type of item you're trying to build? A wall or a floor? We need this kind of logic again. So I'm just going to cut and paste these over here. Except instead of saying, what are you building? It's what are you trying to snap to? Which in our case will be the hit item. If you remember, hit item is whatever this trace says we're pointing the pointer at, the crosshair. So we'll ask that. So what class of thing are you trying to snap to? And we need another one up here. There's going to be like four paths of execution. So I'll, I'll wire this up and then sort of explain to you what we're doing. Right, so if you look at this, there are four possible ways that this could go. There's we're building a wall and we're snapping to a wall. Or we're building a wall and we're snapping to a floor. And then down here we've got we're building a floor, snapping to a wall, and we're building a floor, snapping to a floor. Now the snap to floor function that we've just set up will be able to do with two, deal with two out of these four cases for us. So in the case we're building a floor, we're snapping to a floor. So we leave that unticked because it's not a wall that we're placing. We put the hit in. We put the thing that we're trying to snap to in. And that will do that. And then all we need to do is grab that, copy, paste up here. And it can also take care of this case for us, where we'll bu we're building a wall snapping to a floor. The only difference is that's ticked. So if I compile that and play, that should still be fine. So yeah, everything's working as before. Floors are still snapping to floors. And walls are still snapping to floors. It's just that we've got rid of all that mess in the one blueprint. Because if you think about it, if we'd gone much further in here, we'd have had the logic for snapping everything to everything all in this one page, and it would be a real mess. So really, this video was just that, just getting this tidied up. We'll carry on next and finish off um, these other two cases where we're snapping two walls instead.